someone could be coming to the doctor and their glucose numbers numbers may look normal, but they're gaining a little weight, or let's say that their blood pressure is climbing and blood pressure is one of the most common consequences of hypertension, or it's a man and he's worried about erectile dysfunction, or the woman is worried about polycystic ovary syndrome, the most common forms of infertility. And those are both very intimately derived from insulin resistance. Their glucose is normal. The physician says, well, you're not really on the spectrum of type 2 diabetes. But if, they, if we were to pause that conversation and look at insulin, then we would say, oh, my heavens, your, your insulin is five times higher than it ought to be. Um, that's, that's a red flag. Now, having said all of that, um, what could someone do if someone had immediate access to their blood lipids or their conventional um, clinical blood measurements? Glucose won't tell you too much. I would say, look at your triglyceride to HDL ratio. Take your triglyceride number, divide it by your HDL cholesterol number. And if that number, if that, that, that um, answer is less than 1.5, that's a very good sign that the person is insulin sensitive and they're, and they're doing well and they have a low risk of heart disease. You'd mentioned that sometimes people will adopt a low carb diet <clears throat> What will very, very, very often happen, triglycerides will plummet, HDL will go up. Those are two very, very good changes by, by any definition, even dogmatic conventional thinking would say that's a good change. What may happen in some is LDL will stay or go up. And that will be that will commonly be flagged um, because because conventional thinking looks at LDL as this um, evil that by by all means must be expunged and must be pushed down to as low a number as possible. And that is absolutely not true. LDL alone has almost no predictive value when it comes to understanding someone's heart disease risk. And in contrast, there is exceedingly clear evidence that people, as we get older, people with the lowest cholesterol levels uh, die sooner. And then the converse, people with the highest cholesterol live longer. And, and the lower, especially LDL levels, um, it increases people's risk of dying from infections by like 15 times. That's a phenomenal increase in risk of, of serious infections, as well as blood-based cancers like leukemia and lymphoma. So LDL is an extraordinarily protective molecule. It's, it's very much a part of the immune system that's very overlooked, unfortunately. And I'm not saying LDL has no relevance to health, but I am saying to look at LDL alone simply gives you almost no real value. If, if someone is adopting a low carbohydrate diet and they really want to get a feel for their, what their blood lipids can tell them, look at the triglyceride to HDL ratio. And I guarantee it will start to go down with the adoption of a low carb diet. As insulin comes down, those blood lipids get better.